Hello, this 2022 Denver Energy Code training was developed in conjunction with Community Planning and Development and the Office of Climate Action, Sustainability and Resiliency. It will introduce you to the compliance pathways and submittal requirements for commercial buildings in Denver. It's designed to be viewed in about 10 minutes. If you download the PDF version of this training, you can access links to many other resources and training opportunities on each slide. Let's take a moment to review how Denver defines commercial buildings. The residential portions of the 2022 Denver Energy Code apply to residential buildings that meet this definition from the code. Residential buildings are detached one and two family dwellings and multiple single family dwellings, townhouses, and group R3 and R4 buildings three stories or less in height above grade plane. The commercial buildings of the code apply to everything else, new buildings with condition space that are not defined as residential buildings, and any such buildings undergoing an addition, remodel, alteration, repair, change of occupancy that would result in an increase in demand for either fossil fuel or electric energy, or change of use. New in the 2022 Denver Energy Code is a definition of an all-electric property. This is used in several places to facilitate easier compliance for all-electric properties. An all-electric property is one that contains no permanently installed equipment or appliances that utilize combustion, plumbing for fuel gas or fuel oil, or fuel gas utility connection, installed within the buildings or site except for emergency power systems and standby power systems. Emergency power systems and standby power systems are defined in the code as service loads where interruption of the primary power could result in loss of human life, serious injuries, or it could create hazards or hamper rescue or firefighting operations. Let's review the process that is required for any commercial project. All commercial projects will first need to choose a compliance pathway and then comply with the mandatory requirements. Many of the mandatory requirements are the same between the two pathways. Teams will need to review the requirements of the Denver Green Buildings Ordinance, the Denver Green Code, commissioning, envelope and air leakage testing, and all projects will also need to use the IECC checklist to document the mandatory requirements of their selected pathway, which will vary. The checklist is also where teams will report their 2030 EUI target for the Energize Denver Ordinance. Lastly, projects pursuing the performance path will also need to submit the energy model report. Next, let's review the various pathways. The 2022 Denver Energy Code offers both prescriptive and performance compliance options, giving design teams and owners flexibility in finding the best compliance path for their project. Each compliance path is set up to incentivize building electrification. Prescriptive compliance is more straightforward in determining the requirements of a compliant building. Performance compliance requires energy modeling, but allows for more flexibility. The performance path also has three different options for compliance. Compliance by energy cost savings under Section C407, by site energy savings under Appendix SE, or by designing to a fixed energy performance target under Appendix PT. The link here will take you to Denver's webpage dedicated to design phase resources on which you will find many more resources and training opportunities for the various pathways. Regardless of which compliance pathway you choose, there are several mandatory requirements that all projects must consider. One item that was required to be documented by all commercial projects is compliance with the Denver Green Buildings Ordinance. Requirements will vary by project type and size. Teams can select from a broad menu of strategies that help Denver to achieve more sustainable development. You can find more information on the Green Buildings Ordinance webpage. Another requirement for all new commercial projects is some limited mandatory use of the Denver Green Code. Project teams need to choose a certain number of credits from each category, as shown in this table. This is designed such that teams can choose options that are cost effective and fit well with their project's other goals. The link here will take you to a web page where you can learn more. Be sure to review other mandatory requirements that apply to all projects, such as air leakage testing, a new envelope performance backstop, commissioning, electric vehicle charging requirements, electrification for space and water heating, and what it means to be considered an all-electric property. Projects using the performance path must also follow mandatory provisions from ASHRAE 90.1 2019. The prescriptive and performance checklists are a handy place to view the mandatory requirements for your chosen pathway all in one place. 
Now let's explore the different pathways, starting with the prescriptive path. Prescriptive compliance requires that each element of the building meets a minimum standard. It is a check the box compliance process that utilize ComCheck to demonstrate compliance and that allows for envelope trade-offs as long as you still meet the backstop. The use of section C406 then allows teams to choose energy efficiency credits from a standard menu. This makes the prescriptive path very easy to use and very easy to plan around. Denver has amended section C406 with a new menu of efficiency credits. How many credits are required will depend on building type and fuel source. All electric properties will require less credits than mixed fuel properties. Check out Denver's updated prescriptive path checklist and new C406 planning tool. This will help you plan your credit requirements while you, while you are still early in the design process. Performance compliance utilizes whole building energy modeling. All performance pathways have the same documentation requirements. To begin this process, teams should engage an individual with the ASHRAE Building Energy Modeling Professional Certification. The energy modeler will use Denver's energy modeling report template for compliance documentation. They will also report the EUI, or energy use index, in KPTUs per square foot per year to help teams plan for future compliance with your project's Energize Denver Ordinance 2030 target EUI. Although meeting this 2030 target EUI is not an explicit requirement of energy code compliance, it is important to design new buildings with this future target in mind. Since the performance pathways have slightly different mandatory requirements than the prescriptive path and include requirements from ASHRAE 90.1 2019, teams are encouraged to start using Denver's new performance path checklist early in the design process. It is a helpful resource that can be used by design teams to ensure that all mandatory requirements are implemented in the design. On-site renewable energy can be used to help meet any of the performance paths, but can only off to offset up to 10% of the proposed design's energy cost or energy use. Finally, all performance paths can also be used for additions and alterations projects. Teams will not have to modify any unaltered portions of existing buildings and will have slightly lower targets than new construction projects, making the performance path a great option for existing buildings. Once you begin the energy modeling process, you can evaluate which performance pathway is the best fit for your project. Denver has amended section C407 from the IECC and also added two more performance pathways. Projects have the option to comply via energy cost savings using section C407, by site energy savings using Appendix SE, or by designing to a fixed energy performance target using Appendix PT. Since C407 and Appendix SE use the exact same reference baseline, it will be easy for your energy modeler to evaluate all three methods without any extra energy modeling effort. The benefits of using the performance pathways is that this method encourages a holistic design process and allows for more flexibility with prescriptive elements of the energy code. It will also help you design and evaluate your design relative to Denver's net zero energy goals and plan for compliance with the Denver Green Buildings Ordinance. Existing building projects are slightly more complicated in that they will have different compliance requirements depending on the scope of the project, but they will also have the option to use either the prescriptive or performance methods of compliance. You can find more details on these requirements on Denver's website under the web page dedicated to alterations and additions. Thank you for viewing this presentation. Be sure to check out the other resources on Denver's website and don't hesitate to reach out if you have further questions.